Yo, welcome back, my man Brown. What up, though, Tom? Yo, welcome back, everybody, to the Keep It a C Note podcast. I'm Tom, that's my co host, Brown, as always. What up, though, y'all? Listen, we ready to get come back with y'all. Appreciate y'all hitting us up on Instagram, yep. on Facebook, Twitter. Keep throwing out them ideas, keep throwing out the debates, man. Listen, and one day y'all gonna end up on the show. Yeah, we got a couple of people that we already been talking about. We gotta get on the show, man. A couple, Soon. couple debaters, especially my man Vito. Man, Vito, Vito, you don't give up, man. I love that. So but we got a couple coming. other people. We got oh, my yeah, man John that's in the building. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to John. And my man Sco. He he thinks pretty crazy too. So. <laughs> You know what I mean? We gonna set it up soon. We 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 live now, so we gonna make sure we get everybody on it. Exactly. So we ain't talk about comedy yet, really, in the show. Okay. So I want you to give me your comedy show. I want you to give me your, your three comedians: your opener, your mid act, and your headliner. And if you want to, you could throw a host in there. You know, as an honorable mention. Who, who who's your opener, bro? Hmm. First, I'd give you my host. All right, who's your host? My host would be Fred G. Sanford. Oh. And the G stands for gotta host the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but Red Fox would definitely be my host. He, he right. you know what I mean? Raw and uncut, I think, in between intermissions, he would have everybody just dying. Right. Um, my opening act would be Dave Chappelle. Okay. I think Dave Chappelle is extremely extremely funny um the Dave Chappelle show I, I I think that's a match that's probably up yeah. there compared to everybody else shows Definitely. um yeah so he would be my opening act uh my mid act would be uh Martin okay yeah uh I just think when Martin was in his bag he had it all from stand up to the show to the movies. Like Martin's definitely a funny guy, so he would be and he would be my mid act, and then my closer would be to me the greatest greatest comedian of all time, Richard Pryor. Mm. Like, listen, man. Sometimes I be on my joint late night, and I throw some old Richard Pryor joints on there. And that guy is still funny to this day. And he can touch anything. Like, mm -hmm. he go there, he talk about the mafia, he talk about uh, race and how it was back then. He mm -hmm. give it to you raw and uncut. And even when he gets deep, and he had you sitting there thinking, thinking, and then wham, he just hit you with some funny shit that just, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, had you dying. So, to me, he's unmatched. He would be my, he would close my show. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna go with, well, before I give you my host, I think we will both agree on an honorable mention of Robin Harris. Very underrated. He gave us baby eight kids and you know, he just had a style that was just unmatched. Pops? Yeah, Pops was that dude. My host is gonna be Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is just blazing the trail and doing things that a lot of cats ain't doing. The it wasn't a great stand-up, but the one that he did in his basement, I thought that was creative. Like, you just did a whole stand-up special in your basement. That's dope. The only comedian to sell out a, a football stadium, and he yeah. did it in his hometown. That's major, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, to be able to have that kind of following just shows the kind of work you put in. And he puts in work when it comes to movies. That's a fact. My opener, like yours, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is probably the only comedian today that can get away with being politically incorrect without having a problem. Like Dave Chappelle has literally talked about the gays, races, transgender, women, everybody. He talks about everything and he spins it to a point where it's like, yo, I know you're making fun of somebody, but it's funny as hell. Right. You do know what I'm saying? And I feel like, like you said, the Chappelle show is so creative. Unmatched. I don't think you could ever put on a show that that epic. You know, so the only kind of show I can kind of compare it to is like a Saturday Night Live or In Living Color. That was the next one, and he took that to another. <laughs> but level. he blows all them Jones out the world. I would man. say so. Yeah, the Chappelle, and it only had two real seasons. Right. The third season was, you know, that was when he was leaving. They threw it together, whatever yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. But them first two seasons, 
are literally being replayed everywhere. Like, he even has right. to the point where Netflix had to go to court to get it back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What is it? When keeping it real goes wrong. wrong. How hey. about it? How about it? You know what I mean? So my mid card would have been my, oh, my, my headliner until this last movie. Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. Until Coming to America 2 came out, Eddie Murphy was my number one comedian. Right. But when you come back after 30 years and give me this piece of crap of a movie, I got to knock you down a bit. I'm going I'm to keep it a C note with you, though. Since I say, like, maybe Nutty Professor, too. Like, Eddie been lost, man. Like, I've been off Eddie. It's true. He's been really Disney campy, all that kind of stuff. And this was the chance for you to come back and be Eddie. We were waiting for your stand-up. We weren't waiting for coming to America, too. When you said that you were going to come back and do a stand-up special, the world was waiting. Right. You were going to get that big Netflix deal like, like Dave Chappelle got and Chris Rock got. But guess what? After this movie, I don't want to see you do stand-up. I don't. like Because I, I don't want you to come out and give me Mr. Disney. Right. You're not going to give me Raw Eddie, which yeah, I raw, thought you were. Raw, raw Eddie been out the window. That's why I've been over Eddie. Like, I've been bumped him down on my list. Yeah, so that's why you're my mid act. My headliner, just like yours, Richard Pryor, man. Richard Pryor. Legend. What can you say? He's a legend. And he changed the game a lot. Like, a lot of people don't even realize this, that the sensor button and, and all of that stuff in the tape delay yep. was created because Richard Pryor's TV show back in the day That's a fact. where he said some words that they wouldn't let come on but it aired on live TV so the next week they delayed the show and had that sensor button so when you can change television and you can keep me laughing about stuff you got characters that you brought in mm -hmm. you, you can go to any audience mainstream you can come in the hood you can go to the suburbs you can talk to anybody on the planet and make them laugh anytime you want and he made fun of himself after he burned himself up and made a whole special about it yeah. dude is a legend he's the goat there, there ain't too much you can say about uh richard Pryor that, that don't make him the goat so that's my headline right 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 and just so we clear, though, your honorable mention, when I said Pops, I meant Pops of House Party, so yeah. everybody would know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love Bang 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 Pops. That yeah, was my yeah, dude, yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want them to think I was talking <laughs> Bang 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 Pops. No, we wasn't going there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, wait. You were telling me that somebody got asked you about our running back list. But what happened? Yeah, so um, we had somebody to come check me about the running back list, and they gave me two names. One of the names I didn't agree with. Um, they said LT, mm. LaDam LaDamian Tomlinson. So I didn't agree with that one, but the other name that was mentioned, I'm like, damn, we did miss him, Walter Payton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to keep it a C note in front of everybody and amend my list mm. where I'm going to take Roger Craig off as my fifth running back and I'm going to put Walter Payton on there. Mm. So we appreciate for being G-checked about it and being corrected. So that's me amending my list. I don't know how you feel. I really have to amend my list and I'm ashamed and embarrassed that I left sweetness off my list. So my list completely changes now that Walter Payton's in the mix. Yeah, okay. Daniel Thomas was a great running back, but I don't feel like he's top five worthy. No. So my top five now, Adrian Peterson is number five. Marshall Falk is number four. My man, get bumped. <laughs> Jim Brown is now number three, and Walter Payton is securely in at my number two spot below Barry Sanders. Walter Payton is the beginning stages of what a scat back is today. I can catch it out of the backfield. I can I can juke you and go for yards. But he also had power. So you ain't just gonna kill Sweetness, you know what I'm saying? He was he was what Alvin Kamara is now back then when they weren't even doing that. So I had to take it from my man Brown over here and I had to bump the overrated Emmett Smith 
off my list. I told you. <laughs> I told you. I had to get him out of here. I told you. And a lot of people starting to hit me up about that, too. Like, you might be right about him, man. I'm telling you. He's very, listen, he's a very, like they say, you're a system quarterback. Emmett Smith is a system running back. That's a fact. I feel like if you put any, not any running back, but if you put any of those top running backs back in the day. They kill that. If you put Thurman Thomas back there, he wins them rings. He gets all them yards. Exactly. Same thing with Barry Sanders exactly. and a couple of the other top guys. Like, we got to keep it a C-note. But I'm just baffled on how Walter Payton goes from not mentioned at all <laughs> to number two on the list. That's an oversight on my part wow. because that's my guy. And I didn't even think of him when I was putting my list together. And that's maybe because he's a little bit underrated. And he flies under the radar because he had that great defense that he played with and everything yeah, like he, that. He definitely flew under the radar. That was a a, a, a mistake on my part. Gosh, <laughs> though. You, <laughs> out of the top five to number two, like, sheesh. So hopefully we don't do it with this next list. We're going to do our top five quarterbacks. Okay. So top five QBs all time. My man Brown, who you thinking? Top five, um, since we always do honorable mention, I'm going to say Johnny U was my honorable mention. Okay. Johnny U came in and he won from the gun bust. Um, he's one of those trendsetters. And um, I don't think he gets mentioned enough. So, Johnny U. Number five. One Super Bowl, one and two. Green Bay Packer. Bart Starr. Ooh, wow. Five rings. Best playoff percentage record. He's 9-1 and one in the playoffs. Mm. Only lost one time in the playoffs. Like I said, he got five rings. Super Bowl 1 and 2. He got to go on there. Number four. A lot of people may get upset with me, but I'm going to keep it to see no. Number four would be Thomas Brady. On Ooh. Office. Yeah. And um, here's the thing with that. I think the same thing we just said about Emmitt Smith. Ooh. Thomas Brady is a system. Not He's not a system quarterback, but I don't think we give credit to New England's defense on those teams. You got to understand, right? To me, I think Thomas Brady, he's great at managing a game. He's great at hitting open receivers. He's so-so with the deep ball. But this guy then took numerous pay cuts just so you can add all type of weapons to the team. Whew. You know what I mean? He's always had a good line, especially after they changed the rules for him and he went out with the leg injury and they started all them new rules because of Brady. He's always had a great line and he kind of runs like Wes Welker, uh, Edelman, they kind of run like three, four slant, three, four yard slant routes. I think we give him a little too much credit. He's still my top five, even when you go to Tampa Bay. You can't say Tampa Bay wasn't loaded. They were stacked. They, were they stacked. was they was stacked. If Jameis Winston just plays within the offense, as I'm saying as a manager, then Tampa Bay wouldn't have needed Brady. They could have won with Winston, but Winston, he makes bad decisions. Tom, that's, Brady has the IQ. He's not going to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Even when the arm strength is going down, it's like like Peyton. Like, you know, these guys, they have high IQ. But that Tampa Bay team was also loaded. So we're giving him a lot of credit, but every time he won a championship, he's had top five defense in the Ooh. league. So I got to keep it a C note. Number three, Peyton Manning. Ooh. And Peyton Manning, he's made numerous players stars. Um, he suffered from the opposite. Now, he's always had good receivers, good offensive players, no defense. And I think that's what hurt him in Indianapolis. When you see he went to Denver, even though the arm strength was gone, being as though he had the IQ, he had the good defense in place, he was still able to win. I think if he has better defenses over them years in Indianapolis before the injury, 
he has more rings, but the defense handicapped his career. Mm. Number two, Denver Bronco, John Elway. Mm. I think a lot of people don't put respect on Elway name. That man, he won two, he went went out winning two Super Bowls, but he played in five Super Bowls, and he played in five Super Bowls in the era where Montana and all of them played when the NFL was real. So I think you got to put some respect on John Elway's name. He's a great quarterback. He's running things over there in the organization. He even brought him a ring by bringing Peyton Manning over. He's my number two. My number one, Joe Montana. Um, yeah, I, I got Joe Montana as my top guy, man. I just think that, that Joe Montana, he kind of changed the game. To me personally, he, he kind of changed the game. I think as far as complete like accuracy, um, IQ, and everything else, as, as, as well as talent, I think nobody is better than Joe Montana. Mm. So boom, I just kept it a scene. <laughs> All right, so I got honorable mention I'm gonna start with. Um, First, I'm going to start off with Warren Moon. Uh, I got three honorable mentions. Warren Moon. If Warren Moon would have played his whole career in the NFL, he would own almost all statistical records that, that, that are out there. And I feel like had he not been in Houston with a trash organization and that he did take to the playoffs, right. he would have won a Super Bowl if he had some talent. Okay. Next, Jim Kelly. Same thing as Warren Moon. You go to four straight Super Bowls, you fall short, and one of them Super Bowls, he was this close. Yep. A kicker yep. lost you a ring. I feel like if he would have won one of those Super Bowls, that vaults him into the top five. Facts. Because statistically, Jim Kelly was a killer. Facts. He was an absolute killer. So I got to give him that. Dan Marino. My favorite non-eagle growing up was Dan Marino because Dan Marino could throw that football. Right. He never really had a chance to have a successful career if he wasn't carrying a whole team. He got to he got to the deep in the playoffs early in his career and never really got back there. Right. And I feel like that is management's fault. So that's why he doesn't make my top five, even though that's my guy. Now my top my number five. Probably going to piss off a lot of football fans, but Joe Montana is number five for me. Whoa. Now, my reason for this is you played with Jerry Rice. You got you, you had a great coach when you first came in the league. Right. Who had a system that was unheard of and was perfect for you because you didn't have a strong arm. You weren't that big. You're not mobile. So you had to be accurate and have timing. So they created the West Coast offense, and that made you run really well. So I'm going to hit you with this slant and see what my guy does. So it's less on me, more on them. So basically, you're saying that what I just said about Tom Brady, Brady. <laughs> you're saying I'm going to keep it a C, though, with you. Joe wow. Montana is the greatest system quarterback of all time. Wow. Steve Young won a Super Bowl when you immediately left. And then you go to Kansas City, and you... I mean, you were old, but you didn't have the talent that you had in San Francisco, so. Yeah, but they didn't have no talent there at all. This like is true. City. But if he was number one, you bring them up a little more. So that takes me to number four. Drew Brees. Little guy. Five foot ten, whatever. But he's brilliant. He can see the field. He learned how to space an offensive line out so that he can see the field and make downfield reads, only being 5'10". You're not fast. Right. You're not mobile. You had a reconstructed so, uh, sh shoulder when you left San Diego, which was the stupidest thing they could have done was getting rid of you, even though Phillip Rivers had a great career. But you go and you get with Sean Payton, and y'all created magic. Now, you should have won more Super Bowls than you did. My man Brown's team stood in the way of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... You feel, I feel like he's very underrated, and he owns a lot of the, the statistical records that stand today. They say Drew Brees next to his name. That's a fact. Number three, John Elway. Mm. 
I got him at three because, yes, he got to some Super Bowls early in his career, but the two that he won were on the backs of a great defense, a good receiving core, and the top running back in the league absolutely running over everybody. Not to take away from what he did at the end of his career to win that bowl, but to be honest, with those teams, all you had to do is not lose the game. I'm not saying he was a game manager because he came up clutch a couple times, but the reason why they won those two Super Bowls was Terrell Davis. So he's number three for me. Mm. Number two, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is a genius. Right. He is the equivalent of a football genius. He is one of the first quarterbacks, maybe even the first quarterback, to call his own plays consistently at the line, where they literally let him be the offensive coordinator. Right. What he felt, what he wanted, what he needed to do on the line, he looked, and I'm calling the play. And he changed it, and he made a lot of players better. Marvin, Edgerin, uh Reggie. Reggie. You know what I mean? Like, he Dallas. elevated a lot of people down. Like, he, and then when he went to Denver, he reinvented himself. Because I can't throw it 60 yards no more. Not like he had the greatest arm coming out of Tennessee, but he had a nice arm. But I can't throw it 60 yards no more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change who I throw it to. Now my slot man is going to become the, the guy. Now right. I'm throwing these, these slants and, and comeback routes and stuff like that. We're not working about the deep ball. And I'm going to let my defense win me this championship. Right. So that's why Peyton Manning is number two for me. Number one. Got it. Thomas Michael Brady. Yes. Tom Brady, no matter how much you love him or hate him, you got to give the dude props. He been to how many Super Bowls? He been to a lot. He been to you know what I'm saying? He's got this many of them. Oh wait, no, no, no. this many of them. Yes. My man won six Super Bowls with the New England Patriots, and he only had a good wide receiver for one and a half seasons. He had Randy Moss, and then he had a broke down Chad Ochocinco. And Randy Moss wasn't at the top of his game, but they did some special things that year. They, they didn't win the Super Bowl, though. They should have won the Super Bowl. They ran into, I don't know how you lose to Eli Manning and the Giants, but, hey, you lost to them twice. Then you run into Nick Foles, who was hot as hot, as hot can get. And, hey, that fly eagles fly on that one. But everybody said, is it the system? It's the system. It's... He's a system quarterback. He can't win without Bill. So what did he do? He went to another team, won the first year. Now, yes, Mike Brown said that team was stacked. Yes. Stacked. But he also had to beat a hot Patrick Mahomes. Not hold on. Now he was let, hurt. Let's keep it a scene. He though, was hurt. Though. Not only was that a stacked team, but if you remember the beginning of the season. When this Tampa Bay was struggling, uh, Bruce Arians let, let well, let's go to what Tom is comfortable with. That's smart. And what he was comfortable with is dinking and dunking like he's been doing. That's why, and now he doesn't have the arm strength. So when he had Randy Moss, he still had a little arm mm -hmm. strength in him. Deep. So Randy Moss was a factor. But if you look at that team, he has no arm strength now. Mike Evans was not a factor. Mike Evans, this is probably statistically one of his worst years ever. Probably. Where they had Mike Evans running three-yard routes. You know what I mean? And that's not his game. But I that's when I say when we really look at things, like we give him credit, but he came to a stacked team. And then once Bruce seeing that it wasn't working, okay, we didn't have training camp because of COVID and all that. I give you that. But the stuff wasn't working because Bruce Arians really want to air the ball out. That's true. And Tom Brady can't do that no more. Now, now with Winston, you had the same offense. The difference was with Winston is he don't got the IQ. Mm -hmm. So he's making passes in this offense, this air it out offense, but he's not making the right pass. Right. We got to take all that away from time now. He doesn't have no arm strength no more, so we can't run these routes. So we're going to just dink and dunk. And I think we got to look at that, man. But, he dink and dunk to that chip. he elevated. He elevated people to levels that they would have never elevated to playing with anybody else. Rob Gronkowski is going to be a Hall of Famer 
because of Tom Brady. This is true. Because Rob Gronkowski, and I'm going to keep it a C-note with you. This is not hate. Rob Gronkowski does nothing special. Nothing He's not all. fast. No. He doesn't run the best routes. He's bulky. He's, he's kind of clumsy. But Tom Brady knew how to elevate his But game. Gronk is giving you from New England and now he's mm-hmm. giving you no more than seven yard routes. Yeah. And Brady knows how to get it to him. So then you take an Edelman who for three years, I say three years, Julian Edelman was unstoppable. Tom Brady lifted him up. Tom Brady has never really had receivers to carry well, he, him. He's good with that's why I say when you look at it, dink and dunk receiver, Wes Welker. Look at who he had uh the most success with this year. Goodwin, mm-hmm. uh Miller, like mm-hmm. those guys that just run them little slant routes, turn around and catch the ball. Mm-hmm. When you really break it down, besides for Randy Moss and Randy Moss, just by running by you, is going to make you throw the deep ball. But Mm -hmm. other than that, when you look back to everybody else, Deion Branch and all Mm -hmm. of them, they've all been dink and dunk received. When you say Deion Branch, we go, who? Right. Let's not forget, Tom Brady made Deion Branch into uh, a a, a guy that became a Super Bowl MVP. But that's (laughs) also, like... To keep it a C note, like Ocho Cinco, when he finally went and played with New England, he wasn't still Ocho no. Cinco, Ocho Cinco, no. but he couldn't play with them. First of all, they found out that he couldn't run, wasn't a good route runner. Mm-hmm. And then he, that Dinkin and Duncan's not him neither. Like, some guys, when they, they want you to air the ball out. And I think Tom is, he's, he's a system quarterback. Right? What I'll say. That, that cements him number one for me is the fact that he knows what he does well and he pinpointed it and he killed the league with it. And he's still killing the league with it. All right, listen. Let me piggyback off something you said. I want to ask you a bonus question. All right. Because you said about John Elway and people carrying his team. Mm-hmm. Terrell Davis wins them two Super Bowls. If he never gets hurt, do you think he breaks that top five? Because Ooh. I think them two years that he won the super that he won the Super Bowl, it I think at least one of them years he came close to, to breaking the record. Yes. You know He what? was a workhorse. Yeah. I do believe if he gets a full career, Terrell Davis makes it in my top five. The only thing that hurt Terrell Davis was the fact that he wasn't a real good pass catcher. That's just true. He caught the ball, but he was not somebody you would send out on the route. So that would hurt him a little bit. But I feel like if you don't cut his injury, his, his career short with the migraines and all the other stuff, he was unstoppable. He was fast. He was powerful. You stack the box on him and he's and he still running, running through the line. line. He, has, he has vision. He was a phenomenon. He was something that probably couldn't last in the league. Man. I say if he would have been as though he got two rings, if he could have put up them numbers like two more years, especially like, because I think after Elway won the second, he retired, right? Mm-hmm. If he could have still put up them monster numbers for two more years without getting hurt, I think I, I would have him in my top five. Definitely. Definitely. For sure, for sure. So, they just signed a fight, man. And... We always talk about the fight game and everything like that and how we see it. So he just signed the fight. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. One of the biggest heavyweight fights in right. a long time. We've been waiting for it. Who you got, bro? I got Fury. Whoa. And, and, and here's the thing, man. Like, I don't like to get caught up in the hype. Like, I think Joshua is good. Don't get me wrong. But... To me, he's more like a power puncher trying to knock you out. Um, and he's also a guy that when you look back at his replays, he throws a lot of wild punches. Mm. And I think, <clears throat> first of all, Fury already has a style that just annoys you. Very. All the very herky-jerky much. stuff. Then mm-hmm. he's in there talking dirty to you. Then, but he can really box. Mm-hmm. So as he's doing all this annoying stuff, he's jabbing you to death. So I don't think Joshua can stay patient enough to 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 make it a good fight. I don't think he's as good as a boxer mm. as as Tyson Fury is. 
Tyson Fury can box and he can brawl and knock you out. I don't think he would knock Joshua out. I wouldn't be surprised if Joshua put him down in a fight. Mm. But in the long run, I say that fight goes the distance and I got Fury beating him on points. All right. So if he doesn't catch him with a sneaky punch and puts him down, because that's very I possible gonna with Joshua. Put, I think he's going to put Joshua It's possible. Him. All right, so... My answer comes with a bunch of loaded ifs, and it's sad, but you've got to throw these ifs on to Anthony Joshua. If Anthony Joshua does not try to bulk up and look like a UFC fighter, a UFC heavyweight at 260 something, and he comes in in shape, he can outbox and I think knock out Tyson Fury. I'm going to keep it a C note with you. The greatest thing. For the victory of Anthony Joshua in this fight happened two years ago with Andy Ruiz. That makes sure that he doesn't take anybody lightly for the rest of his career. I feel like if he comes in in shape and he doesn't because once he starts to get gassed, his hands drop and this gets exposed right. and he starts to get touched. But he still wins because he's built up enough points. Right. If and, and an example of that is the Vladimir Klitschko fight. If Vladimir Klitschko wasn't 42 years old when he fought Anthony Joshua, he would have knocked him out in the fifth round, That's just like fight. he almost did. He has to, for my my, I feel like he has the power with the skill enough to knock Fury out. Okay. Because I don't feel like Fury poses as big of a threat with the punch. He's very, his, his, he has great feet, good footwork. His head movement is unmatched to anybody in heavyweight. Like, I don't know if we've seen anybody. With I that think kind he of got movement. sneaky power. He, he's, he's, he's caught some people with some sneaky stuff. Like, he caught Deontay Wilder. He wasn't ready. But, I, and I'll say this, I'm going to keep it a scene with this. I think Deontay Wilder beats both of them. If he fights AJ, lights out. I think he gets Tyson Fury back. I don't feel like Tyson Fury is a better. He's a better boxer than Deontay, but I feel like Deontay is a better fighter, if, if that makes any sense. All right, let me, can I piggyback off a couple of things you said? Let's, let's like, go. Joshua, when the last time that you've seen him that you can recall off top where you've seen him in a fight where he didn't look out of shape? His last fight. His last fight, he came in in shape, and he actually boxed the way he should. He didn't come in looking for the KO. He came in, I'm going to box you and catch you so I can get the KO. So he wasn't as sloppy because he wasn't as heavy. He now, comes think in about who, five. now think That's about problem. who he fought. Who, who. Yeah, now he, he, did, he didn't fight anybody the caliber of Fury, but, but there ain't too many cats in the game the caliber of Fury. But... The fact that, A, he does have comparable size to Tyson Fury. Tyson right. Fury, 6'9". Uh, AJ is listed as 6'6". Six, six. So he ain't going to be reaching and running right. with somebody smaller than him. But who do you to. think, just off boxing, pure boxing talent, do you think Joshua yes. is I, better than I Fury? Do. I, I better. do. He has the pedigree. Let's not forget he, he was an Olympian. So, there's a re so your boxing pedigree starts there. His problem is he starts to lose his mental as soon as he get gassed. And the feet start to move slower. The hands start to move a little slower. That, that head movement starts to go a little slower. And so you can start tagging. So he started getting caught. But I feel like now he's learned because Andy Ruiz exposed you at the time. Because at that time, you were hyped. Right. You had not been tested except for the Klitschko fight. And we knew Klitschko wasn't going. He's 42. That would have been a miraculous thing. Andy Ruiz beating him, let him know that he's not indestructible, that he has a lot more to learn, and I got to come into this fight game in a lot better shape. And I feel like if he comes in, I'm going to set a weight. If he comes in anywhere between 230 and 245 in this Tyson Fury fight, he beats Tyson Fury easy. Like, he dominates him for the first five I, rounds and round five. I, I, can't, I can't see it because at the end of the day, like, a lot of the stuff that you're saying that you need to happen is, like, stuff that Fury capitalizes on. 
Fury automatically frustrates you. So he already gets in your head. And the later them rounds get that he keeps jabbing you and you keep missing because he's doing all the head moving, it's only going to frustrate you more. Then he knows how to grab and hit you with the little dirty shots and it's all true. of that. You know what I mean? So I think right here he got him. He already he he already got him on the mind game. Yeah. Um, I think the later into the fight that it gets and the more head movement the Fury does, it it is gonna wear Joshua out. I don't know though. I'm like kind of shocked because to me, I don't think Fury. I mean, I don't think Joshua is a better just pure boxer than Fury. I feel like Fury's I just feel style is what makes him a good boxer. I don't feel like he's like fundamentally just beautiful, like a beautiful boxer. I feel like his style is that herky jerk, and I get you off balance, and I might throw a punch or I might step back. That's what makes like that's him. I feel like Joshua is more X's and O's, one two. Combo. I'm a I think move. Joshua more like power punch. Well, he th he does. When he, he does more try like trying to look look to knock you out. But he has a, he has a great jab, and that's one thing that that's a fundamental. His jab is amazing, and it sets up that straight right. So he's going to one two you. So that's fundamental boxing. But what happens is, like I said, when he gets out of shape and he gets out of gas, the fundamentals goes out the window, and he starts head on. Right, and I think that that's that's why he's gonna lose because <laughs> even with that, Fury comes in the ring and a lot of times he looks out of shape. He does, and it doesn't it doesn't distract him or take away from his game. In fact, I think that helps him because people get in that ring and oh, this he out of shape and mm -hmm. he moving all slow and then once you start can't hit him and he's bobbing and pat pat getting out your way that's frustrates you mm -hmm. and he talking dirty to you and he do all the antics where he getting the crowd hype mm -hmm. all of that frustrates you from the gun bus and i think after you do that for a couple of rounds with joshua joshua is going to start reaching well see that's where i think andy ruiz played it because that's why Andy Ruiz has the record he has. Because he doesn't look like a boxer. He comes in the ring and he's like, oh, here's this little fat little dude. Let me just knock him around a bit. And... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sorry, a little technical difficulty. We good, though. But he comes in the ring and he's this little dumpy dude that's out of shape. And he came in and... Everybody underestimates how fast his hands is. Right. So did Joshua. So I don't feel like Joshua would come in a ring and look at Fury and say, oh, look at this dude. He's out of shape. I'm going to walk through him because I've already ran through this problem. Right. So now I'm not going to do that again. So I'm going to give this dude my all from the break, the first bell to the last one. So that's why I feel like that plays a disadvantage against uh, Fury. Listen, before we wrap this up, I just want to piggy bank off one other thing you said. You said you think Deontay Wilder would be either one of them. Both two. of them. I'm going to keep it a C note for you and everybody before we leave the show. I think Deontay Wilder is over. I think that hype, Fury killed that hype. I mm. think he's going to, He's. I don't think he's going to bounce back because he's not a pure boxer anyway. He started boxing late. I think his career goes downhill from mm. here on out. Mm. And that that's just me keeping it per keep I gotta keep it a C note with you. you know? <laughs> so you know, that's what I would say to the rebuttal what you said about Wilder. I'm not impressed by Wilder and I'm not convinced that he's gonna bounce back. I think he still got it, man. I think he still got it. He gotta get the ring though. Yeah, well we You gotta fight somebody. We shall see. Yes, we shall. Because I don't believe it. <laughs> but anyway, Tom, we about to wrap this joint up, man. Yo, thank y'all again every week coming back, hitting us up on IG, Facebook, Twitter, keeping us going, giving us good material. We appreciate y'all, man. Definitely love y'all, man. Yeah, it was definitely love, and we appreciate that. We're going to try to bring y'all the best material we got going forward, so stay with us. Check it out. Subscribe to all the links. We all over the place. Ain't no doubt. And tell everybody. Yeah. Tell everybody keep it a C note, man. Hey. Brown, my man. man. Did it again. Yeah, you know. Gotta keep it a C note. All right, y'all. Y'all get back with us next week. All right.